I am Seamus Dunahoo of EVE University, and this is part one of my walkthrough for the Sisters of EVE level one epic arc, The Bloodstained Stars. Today is Thursday, February the 2nd, 2012. The current patch is Crucible 1.1.2, build number 336683. As of the time of recording, The Bloodstained Stars is the only level one epic arc. All other epic arcs that currently exist are level 4 and should not be attempted by new players without assistance. Uh, unlike the How to Survive EVE Online series, this series is going to be primarily a walkthrough focusing on the missions themselves. I will be making a good faith attempt to spend as little time as possible interspersing general tips and tricks throughout the series. I'm going to be going through some general stuff up front right now in this episode before we even get started, and if any unexpected and unscripted events occur during filming uh, that interfere with filming, uh, I will explain how to deal with those. Uh, the Bloodstained Stars is not a tutorial mission chain. Although it is intended for new players, but it is not a tutorial mission chain, so be advised that if somebody uses combat probes to scan you down while you're in a mission site, they can warp in on you, and if the mission involves trying to retrieve an item, they can steal the item before you can get to it and hold it hostage. Uh, so there are circumstances in which the actions of other players can force you to fail the mission chain. Uh, any epic arc, level 1 or level 4, can be restarted three months later, succeed or fail on the previous attempt. The Sisters of Eve epic arc begins in R99, Moon 3, Sisters of Eve Bureau. To get to the solar system, you bring up the map, go to the world map control panel, the search tab, and you type in the location name A-R-N-O-N. That's Alpha, Romeo, November, Oscar, November. Five letters. You search, and there should only be one result, Arnon Pekanut Essence. Uh, you can left-click the Show Info Circle for the Solar System, go to the Orbital Bodies tab, and scroll down through the long list of Orbital Bodies until you see Arnon 9, Moon 3, Sisters of Eve Bureau. Right-click on that, Show Info, so Arnon 9, Moon 3, Sisters of Eve Bureau, left-click the menu icon in the upper left corner, and you can set destination. Then just follow the highlighted yellow stargates, and when you arrive in the Arnon Solar System, dock at the yellow colored station. In your Autopilot tab, again on the World Map Control Panel, go to the Settings sub-tab, and make sure you select Prefer Safer. If you're setting an Autopilot route, you want to make sure that all boxes on your route indicator, it should show up in the upper left roughly around here. All colored symbols should be yellow, green, or blue. These will represent high security space. If any of them are red or orange, those represent low security space, and if you enter those systems, other players can shoot, can shoot at you, destroy your ship, and if you're not fast enough, they can destroy your pod as well. All without Concord intervention. Remember, the Concord police do not exist outside high security space. There are gate guns and station guns in low security that will respond to criminal actions, but these are not terribly effective, and they're not guaranteed to destroy any aggressors. So make sure you select Prefer Safer. Uh, sometimes pod killing occurs in high security space, but this may be due to suicide ganks or to formally declared wars between player corporations. So you may want to check, uncheck, avoid systems where pod killing has recently occurred, because in high security space, that's not likely to affect you. Leave on the checkbox that says avoid systems on your avoidance list. These are solar systems where your autopilot tries to go around systems. The only solar system uh, that starts off on your avoidance list is Jita, because that is the single biggest trade hub in EVE Online. So if you don't have to go to Jita for shopping, 
uh, the autopilot tries to steer you around that system. Speaking of, uh, you are, again, you are out of the tutorial missions. You are not going to receive free stuff anymore. If you need to get a replacement ship, you will need to go to a trade hub to buy a new ship and new modules. As of the time of recording, the largest trade hubs are, I believe in order, Jita, Juliet, India, Tango, Alpha, Amar, Alpha, Mike, Alpha, Romeo, Romeo, Dodixi, Delta, Oscar, Delta, India, X-Ray, India, Echo, Renz, Romeo, Echo, November, Sierra, Orsolaire, Oscar, Uniform, Romeo, Sierra, Uniform, Lima, Alpha, Echo, Romeo, Tango, and Heck, Hotel, Echo, Kilo. Uh, as somebody who's been playing the game for more than the past two years, I do have the benefit of hindsight and familiarity with various knowledge resources and familiarity with how I like to lay out my interface uh, and how to push buttons in the game. But the character that I will be using to run the epic arc is the character that I ended the Crucible version of How to Survive EVE Online series. Uh, namely, the Professor Seamus Dunahoo character, who at the time of recording only has 315,000 skill points. So the methods and strategies that I use, uh, if they are actually successful, uh, this is a live environment, <clears throat> so we'll see whether or not I accidentally botch anything. But anything that you see me successfully apply in this video should be capable, uh, should be doable by a genuine new character that only has as many skill points. I will be covering what skills I have in particular uh, in a couple of minutes. As you proceed, uh, if you accumulate more than 900,000 skill points, you will have to upgrade your medical clone. So in whatever station that has a cloning facility, Arnon 9 Moon 3 Sisters of Eve Bureau does have a medical facility. Uh, left click the medical button. You will need to click the upgrade clone button and choose the next grade of clone up. Most likely, uh, you just need a beta, or perhaps at most a gamma. Make sure to change the station that your medical clone is located at to be somewhere near your current missioning location. So right now, my original, my clone is, my medical clone is still at Sistevere, so I'm going to change station. I'm going to make this window a little bit bigger. Stations with cloning facilities, I will select Arnon, Sisters of Eve Bureau, and click OK. Accept the cost, it's only 5,600 ISK. <clears throat> the ship that I am using is the catalyst that I originally got uh, from the advanced military tutorial chain. Whatever missioning ship you are using, you should go to the insurance button, select the ship in question, and click insure, click yes, and go for platinum insurance. If something does go wrong, you're going to want the money to buy a new ship and new modules. The Catalyst Destroyer that I have fit is fit with eight 125mm Railgun 1s, a 1 Meganewton Afterburner 1, a Cap Recharger 1, a Small Armor Repair 1, a Power Diagnostic System 1, and a Magnetic Field Stabilizer 1. Uh, while it is possible to deplete my capacitor with everything running, I do have as much capacitor stuff here as I can fit. The magnetic field stabilizer increases the damage and reduces the refire time on hybrid weapons. Hybrid weapons being railguns and blasters. Right now I have antimatter charges fit. Uh, so I have on these weapons a 0.112 radian per second tracking speed, 6 kilometer falloff, 
and 7 kilometer optimal. So I can generally hit things out to 13 kilometers. I do have other types of ammunition. Lead is a mid-range ammunition. Iron is a long-range ammunition. Long-range, least... Hold on, let me put these in order. So, antimatter, shortest range, best damage. Iron range is longest range, worst damage. All railguns and blasters do kinetic thermal damage, but that shouldn't be an issue for the level 1 epic arc. Uh, for my skills, uh, let's see. I demonstrated drones in the advanced military episode of How to Survive EVE Online. Uh, right now I am training uh, scout drone operation and drones. If I get around to using drones extensively, then I will explain those in further detail. Uh, right now I have drones level 3, scout drone operation level 1. I have Electronics 4, Electronic Upgrades 3, Propulsion Jamming 1, Survey 3, Targeting 2. And actually, come to think of it, targeting's probably important now that I'm in a destroyer. I should probably throw another level in there. I, engineering, I have Energy Grid Upgrades 2, Energy Management 2, Energy Systems Operation 2, Engineering 4, Shield Management 1. By the way, electronics and engineering are important. Uh, engineering increases how much power grid your ship has. Electronics increases how much CPU your ship has. The modules that I've described will not fit on a catalyst unless you have at least engineering level 4. So if you can't fit the modules I've described, uh, that's because you're still on engineering 3, which you originally started off with on character creation. Gunnery. I have level 3 in gunnery, level 1 in motion protection, level 1 in sharpshooter, level 3 in small hybrid turret, level 1 in weapon upgrades. Industry is largely going to be irrelevant. Mechanics. I have hull upgrades 1, mechanics 3, remote armor repair systems 1, though that's going to be irrelevant. Repair systems 2, salvaging 1. But I'm not going to spend time during the episode salvaging anything. If you want to salvage any wrecks, right-click one wreck in each room of the mission, with a room being however many wrecks you can see at once on the overview. And you can come back to the mission later. Assuming that nobody else scanned you down while you were in there and decided to warp in and salvage everything after you left. Navigation, I have Afterburner level 2 and Navigation level 3. Uh, science will largely be irrelevant, though I do have Cybernetics level 1. Uh, you may want to get a set of plus 1 training implants. Uh, you can find, if you go to the market under the search tab... Uh, let's see... They start off the word limited. Yeah, here we go. Limited cybernetic subprocessor, limited memory augmentation, Limited Neural Boost, Limited Ocular Filter, Limited Social Adaptation Chip. Um, not terribly expensive, the plus ones should be generally affordable. Uh, keep in mind though, if you are pod-killed for some strange reason, which is unlikely but possible in high security, uh, these implants will be destroyed. So go with what you can afford. Uh, the science skill allows for the use of tractor beams, which you will find useful if you are going to go doing salvaging. You can have some tractor beams pulling in wrecks from 20 kilometers away, and then your salvagers get to work on salvaging the wrecks once they're in range. Uh, the social category, uh, you may want to put a level in the social skill probably after targeting. Uh, it has to do with something called standings. This is not a video on missions and standings. I already have a separate video covering that subject. Uh, please reference that video for explanation on why you would want the social skill. Uh, Spaceship Command, I have Destroyers level 2. I have Galente Cruiser level 2, which would allow me to use a Vexer. 
but really to put a Vexer to good use, I would want Drones level 5, and that's going... It's going to take me 16 hours to finish Drones level 4 right now, and another almost 5 days to get Drones level 5. So it's going to be a while until I could put a Vexer to really good use. I also have Spaceship Command level 3. The trade category is going to be irrelevant for this epic arc. Alright. I believe that covers all the general stuff I would be that I would care to cover. Uh, hopefully the rest of the series will just focus on... Oh, a few other things. If you hit the escape key... I forgot to cover this in um, the Crucible version of How to Survive EVE Online. But under General Settings, on the left-hand side of the panel, I did tell you to turn on the Show Session Change Timer. I never explained why. Whenever you dock in a station, undock from a station, jump through a stargate, change ships while in space, join a fleet of other players, leave a fleet, have your position rearranged within the fleet, fleet hierarchy by a commander, you're going to see a little timer circle in the upper left corner called the session change timer. And a session change takes about 15 seconds. Your session is your primary authoritative data store uh, uh, on the Tranquility server. If the EVE Online game needs to know something about you, about what you're doing in the game, it checks your session. Uh, I'm not going to get too technical into this, um, but from what I've read in the dev blogs, if your session changes too rapidly, bad things happen to the server. So, you... There is a session change timer of 15 seconds. What this means for you is that session change actions can't occur within 15 seconds of each other. So if you just accepted a fleet invite while dropping out of warp on a stargate, that's a session change. You have to wait 15 seconds before you can Field jump through that completed. gate. Alright? Uh, if you just left a fleet while dropping out of warp on a station, you have to wait 15 seconds before you can dock in the station. Uh, in the middle panel of the same tab, there is something called auto target back. Set that to zero targets. What this does is if something target locks you, your computer, your ship's computer will automatically try to target lock them in return. Uh, this can cause bad things to happen if you don't have any targets at the moment and you j just hit a weapon module and your weapon blinks asking you to click something on your overview. If auto target back causes you to lock something in return, you might start shooting when you didn't mean to and um, yeah, bad things could happen. Expand action menu with middle mouse button. I don't like to use the left mouse button for this because I like to use left mouse click and drag to rotate my camera. Under the shortcuts tab, there's a whole bunch of subtabs here where you can set your keyboard shortcuts for various things. You might want to take the time to look through these keyboard shortcuts and see if there are any whose functions you look like you would like to rebind to something else. I think that covers all the general things. We are now going to get started. So once you're docked in Arnon 9, Moon 3, Sisters of Eve Bureau, right-click Sister Alatura, Security Division Epic Arc Agent, start conversation. Uh, a beacon beckons. You are to approach the wrecked ships. Let's click accept. Uh, right-click where it says Monarch, set destination, right-click I don't know if you actually need to return. Let's right-click Arnon 9, Moon 3, and add Waypoint just in case, but it may not be necessary. Make sure your cargo hold has ammunition. It does. Uh, let me double-check my fitting window, make sure... Oh, I don't actually have a drone on board. I'll just throw a Warrior 1 in here. By the way, drones... Um, if you've watched... If you did the Galente version of the tutorial missions, you were given a civilian hobgoblin. But sh if you're going to use a drone, bring a real drone. It does have prerequisites, though. Drones level 1, scout drone operation level 1. Otherwise, you can't use it while in space. 
I have ammunition. I have my drones. I think I'm all set. Let's get this done. Scroll down, find the yellow Stargate, and jump. Warp drive active. By the way, these yellow containers, do not attempt to take anything from them. It will have you flagged as a thief. Um, and the owner can shoot you without Concord intervention. If somebody steals something from you and rejettisons it into their own container, that new container will appear yellow. But property is tracked by the container, not by the item. Since it's been rejettisoned into their own container, it's now their property, and if you try to take it back, now you're guilty of theft. And again, they can shoot at you. If you fire on a thief, the thief can return fire without Concord intervention. If somebody warps in on you during your mission, it's usually because they want you to get they want to trick you into shooting them first. Don't fall for it. And I meant to import my... I'm going to right-click this and remove secure cargo container from overview. I don't need this. I've skipped ahead to the part of the video where I have just arrived in the Monarch Solar System. Right click, Agent Missions, a beacon beckons, Sister Alatura. Encounter, warp to location within zero meters. I've done right clicking in space plenty of times during the How to Survive EVE Online series. Hereafter, I will assume that you know how to warp to a mission once you are in the same solar system. If you need to verify which solar system a mission is located in, you can go to your journal, the Agents tab, the Mission sub tab, double left click the mission in question, and check the location link. Yellow circle indicates the objective is not complete, 0.8 is the security level of the system, and this is a right clickable link. All right. Let me double check what it is I need to do. I need to approach the wrecked ships. The wrecked ships will be large collidable objects. You can double left click in space towards them. If you're having trouble finding them on your overview, uh, you can open the overview settings and go to celestial large collidable object. Turn on my afterburner. Unlike most missions, some missions in the Sisters of Eve Epic Arc can be completed remotely. Uh, you will sometimes be prompted to do so uh, in the mission site. Just click the Complete Remotely button. Request the next mission. Uh, you are asked to report to Tevis Jack's Iteron Mark III in the Taurus Solar System. Right-click this link and set destination. We will not be returning to Arnon immediately. Accept remotely. And close. Warp drive active. By the way, I will hereafter be assuming that you know how to right-click a station or solar system link to set a destination or add a waypoint, and that you know how to navigate the Stargate network if you know the name of your destination. I 
I've skipped ahead to where I've arrived in the Taurus solar system. Uh, Tevis Jack should be a celest should be a beacon on your overview. If you don't see Tevis Jack while you're in Tar, go to your overview settings. You want to go to the filters tab, type sub tab, celestial folder, and turn on beacon. Warp to Tevis Jack at zero. By the way, I'll sometimes be playing with my overview a little bit from time to time, just to make it a little closer to what I'm usually accustomed to. I'm not going to go into great detail about what it is that I'm doing. Uh, this is not a video on overview setup. I'm not going to waste your time with that, since I'm assuming you're more interested in the missions that, rather than what I'm doing with my interface. Uh... Tevis Jack is an agent in space. You should probably have that on your overview. If you need to find it on your overview because you can't right-click him in space... Uh, let's see if I can figure out where this... Here we go. Again, Filters tab, type sub... Left-click the Overview menu icon. Open Overview Settings. Filters tab, type sub tab, celestial folder, agents in space. Right click Tevis Jack and no and start conversation. Uh, he will ask you to go. Uh, shoot some pirates at Monarch, and then bring something back to him at Tar. Right-click Monarch, set destination, right-click Tar, add waypoint, click accept. Warp drive active. I've skipped ahead to the part where I've just arrived in Monarch. Warp to the mission at zero. Warp drive. Be aware this mission does require you to recover an object. Chances are it will appear in a cargo container rather than a wreck. And the cargo container will probably appear when the last uh, hostile is killed. I think. We'll see in a moment. using F1 to fire my weapons, and I'm also using keyboard shortcuts to direct my drone. I'm using a different keyboard shortcut to tell my drone to get back in the drone bay, because these new reinforcements might decide to shoot any drones that were left out. By the way, drones cannot be launched by a keyboard shortcut. You must use the mouse uh you must use right mouse click on your drone control window. Generally speaking, frigates are not a threat to my destroyer, not this small amount of frigates anyway, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. There's a cargo container. Left click and click the open cargo button, and I hit your afterburner.
You can right click a wreck and save the location if you want to come back here later. Keep in mind wrecks will only last two hours. Again, I'm not going to waste your time in this video. Loot all. I'm going to right click a wreck and select abandon all nearby wrecks. Just in case anybody did scan me down, they get, they're welcome to loot. I don't care. Left click Tevis Jack, warp to zero. Warp drive active. Select Tevis Jack. You can click the Start Conversation button on the selected item box. Everything is green check marks because you have the strange data core on board your cargo. It appeared there when you clicked the Loot All button earlier. Complete the mission, and then request the next mission. Retrieving Red. Destroy the pirates, find Red, and bring him back to Tevis Jack. Click the Accept button. This mission takes place in the solar system. Uh, you can right-click empty space and go to retrieving red encounter warp to within zero meters Or you can just right-click the link here. It's linked to the same location Warp to the mission at zero By the way, I have a warrior drone because it was conveniently available. Normally I would not use a warrior drone against blood raiders because blood raiders are not all that susceptible to explosive damage. But any drone is better than no drone. And this is the level 1 epic arc. So it should be easy. They're a bit distant, I'm going to try iron. Control spacebar to full stop, because they're now coming at me. Uh, accuracy of 6, fall off 6 kilometers, optimal of 22. So I can hit out to 28 kilometers with iron. By the way, I can also hit F1 to activate my weapons while I'm busy right-clicking something. These guys don't want to get closer to me for some reason. Ah, there they go. Double left click the drone and hit your afterburner. I'm sorry, the cargo. Double left click the cargo container and then hit your afterburner. And I'm going to switch back to antimatter charges. I'm going to right click a wreck and abandon all nearby wrecks. And turn off the afterburner. Let 
Let me hit open cargo again and loot all. Right click. Oh, actually, I can just warp to Tevis Jack. Warp drive active. By the way, you are free to read the item descriptions on whatever it is that you come across. Red. This is the corpse of a man wearing a red shirt. It looks like he was a pretty tough guy just a few hours ago. No, you drew the short straw. You get to beam down with Captain Kirk. Alright, start conversation. Complete the mission. Request mission. Alerting Alatura. Right click Arnon 9 Moon 3, Sisters of Eve Bureau. Uh, click Accept Mission. And close. Make your way back to Arnon. Should be three jumps from here. I've skipped ahead to the part of the video where I am dropping out of warp on the Sisters of Eve Bureau. Docking request. Right-click Sister Alatura and start conversation. And Tevis Jack's entry should disappear. Uh, you are to kill some pirates, find Nebin Centrian, and return him to Sister Alatura. Click accept. The mission takes place here in Arnon, so you don't need to set a destination. Click close and undock. to the mission at zero. These Corelli spies are Serpentis, generally susceptible to kinetic thermal damage. Your kinetic thermal railguns or blasters should be well suited to it, assuming you're using railguns or blasters. Left-click Centrian's shuttle. Uh, you will need to get closer to it. Uh, double left-click in space. Let me use the look at function. Okay, the shuttle is in between me and that whole mess. So click open cargo. And let's hit the afterburner. Just pulse it once should be enough. All. Double left click away from the whole mess. Once you are clear of obstacles, stock up in the station. 
and turn off your afterburner. Right click Sister Altura, start conversation, and complete the mission. Request next mission. Shivying a chef. Again, this mission takes place in this solar system. Accept the mission. And let's close and undock. Warp to the mission. Warp drive active. Left click Azeal's transport, open cargo, and activate your afterburner. This is an ambush. Hostiles will show up. Then double click, double left click away. It is not a requirement to kill all hostiles in this mission. If you want to, you can. And as usual, bookmark a wreck. I'm just going to return to the Sisters of Use station. Warp drive active. Control R to reload. Docking permission requested. If you Docking request accepted. If you drop out of warp a kilometer or more from the station, you can hit your afterburner to close the distance a bit more quickly. Sometimes you drop out of warp as far as two kilometers away despite trying to warp to zero. 
Right click Sister Altura, start conversation. Complete mission. Request the next mission. Uh, deliver the ransom money for Dr. Lucia Elbin. You're going to be granted an item of a lot of money. So scroll down to the bottom of your items hanger, accept the mission, and make sure you move this into your cargo hold. You're going to need to keep your cargo hold open for this mission. Undock. You don't need to set a destination. This takes place in Arnon. Left click the dead drop and click open cargo. Should be an object of type mission container. That is, if you're going to look for it in your overview settings, it should already be selected, but if you need to look for it in your overview settings, it's of type mission container. And I should be hitting my afterburner to cover this distance faster. Kill the afterburner, drop in a lot of money, and they're going to try and betray you. Double left click away from the container so you're not bumping into it during combat. I have to remember I have antimatter loaded, so I'm good to about f 13, 14 kilometers, I think it was. 13 kilometers. Close your cargo hold at this point. I'm sitting still, waiting for them to come to me. that last one. No, I'm going to approach these other Corelli spies. Left click the cargo container, click open cargo, make sure your afterburner is on, 
abandon all the wrecks. And you can record the location of one of them. Loot all. Turn off the afterburner. Return to the station. Arnon 9, Moon 3, Sisters of Eve Bureau. Click Sister Altura, start conversation, and complete the mission. Request the next mission. And you need to recover Engineer Tahaki Karen. Let's click accept and let's undock. You don't want to bump into things while trying to align to warp, but again, once you're in warp, doesn't matter what you go through. Left click the heartbreak, click open cargo, and activate your afterburner. Let's target block the rogue drones. Start firing. Container is not guarded, technically. You are technically done with the mission. If you want to shoot a couple more things, you can. Turn to station. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Right click Sister Alatura and start conversation. 
complete the mission. Alright, request the next mission. The next mission is going Galente, and you will be directed to Herrera Gate 5, Moon 1, Cryodron Factory. This will start part this will take you to part two of the Bloodstained Stars. Uh, and the station is eight jumps away. Uh, you can go ahead and click accept for the mission. Uh, but this concludes this episode of uh, the walkthrough for the Sisters of Eve Epic Arc. When I start the next episode, I will already be in Herrera Gate 5, Moon 1, Cryodron Factory. Thank you for watching.